Tell us a bit about your background and how you came into politics. First of all, I became a political secretary of my party after I became president of this party and, uh, and also parliamentarian. And uh, I've been also minister of interior, successively education, culture, employment, and also vice uh, prime minister uh, of Belgium. And so uh, it's my background uh, up to now. And uh, after I wanted to change, and um, I worked for the president of the European Commission, uh, and I was in charge with uh, this issue related to uh, victims of terrorism and the way we could improve the situation, the rights of the victims uh, through all around Europe and in the different member states. And very easily, uh, I, uh, I started to work with uh, ICAS and uh, two years ago they asked me um, and they des designated me to uh, become the chair of uh, the new strategic committee they wanted to uh, set up. After your extensive career, what made you join ECAS? And what can you bring to ECAS, especially in the strategic and advisory committee? Uh, to help them, because um, the, the different activities they are carrying out are really the activities in which I wanted to involve myself, for example, uh, uh, conflict prevention, um, also support governance, uh, also uh, trying to promote the gender dimension in democracy to uh, increase the participation of women and so on, uh, how to uh, improve also the different electoral cycle in Africa or uh, also in other parts of uh, of the of the world and uh, how to try to organize election with high standard of uh, uh, democratization uh, with also the respect of uh, international standards and so on so also the way to involve youth and uh, vulnerable groups and uh, because you, you have so many dimension it's a, a totally comprehensive and global approach and it's very interesting because you you have to uh, tackle with technical uh, or legal or political issue or budgetary issue but also with uh, a lot of uh, sociology of the different people you have to know the culture you have to to deal with uh, inter-religious uh, disputes or um, or conflicts and um, so you have also to, to do, and it's very important because it's a, a new activities for ICAS, uh, you have to um, develop uh, peace mediation processes. And, uh, and it's very important for me because during all my political life, I wanted to achieve a compromise, to put people together, to find solution, even if they have totally different interests or totally different opinions or totally different cultures. And it's so important to manage a society, <laughs> trying to find just uh, the common way of living, of uh, achieving drone jo projects and so on. What is your feeling about democracy and the state of democracy where we are now? In fact, it's the first time in my life that I'm so afraid of the situation. Uh, when it comes to uh, the weakness of democracy and uh, the, the state of play of uh, our democracy <laughs> uh, issues, um, I think and, and you, I think that you you just uh, use the, the the right word. We are really under attack, external and internal attack. External, because we know exactly that uh, we are under the pressure of fake news and disinformation coming from some uh, important state abroad, using uh, social medias to uh, change the public opinion. You have this, um, this danger with the 2P polarization and populism. And uh, for example, Europe is now facing um, the increase of uh, far-right parties. Uh, threatening the democracy and uh, having ideas on migration, uh, 
giving and uh, uh, promoting uh, hate speech, uh, having uh, opinion uh, against uh, stranger migrants and so on. And uh, uh, as you can see, the French election, we, we had the far right uh, leader uh, close to, to the victory. And we had a victory of the far right party in Italy. In Belgium, we have the same pressure in the north of the country. And so sometimes I have the feeling to, to live the, the, the same reality than the reality before the Second World War in the year 30s, with this hate against stranger, uh, trying to be developed by, by some interests, by some parties, by some part of the population, and without no courageous response from uh, the other political party because they fear that, that they could lose election if they, if, uh, they defend too much uh, the democratic values or uh, uh, migration policy, uh, more open and so on. So uh, I think we are really under attack in Europe, in the States, we, we, we saw uh, the phenomenon with Trump and uh, what happened with the capital events and so on. But in, in Africa, we have exactly the same. You have a, an increase of uh, military coups and transition. You have this influence of China, some, sometimes Russian. And, um, and you have also a kind of um, distance uh, towards democratic regimes or value because it's linked with uh, Europe and the states and we, we are some old colonial states and so you there is a, a kind of new attitude from uh, pub the public opinion in Africa trying to find their own way and, and, and uh, it's really fair and it's, uh, it's very uh, uh, in important to do it but trying sometimes for some party to take the distance with uh, the human right tradition, uh, uh, the state of rule of law, uh, and also our democratic standards and so on. Are there any improvements actually happening? Who are the relevant stakeholders on the democratization processes in African states? Yes, of course, of course, that uh, we have a lot of uh, success and uh, improvement. And, uh, and especially, I think that the um, African Union is becoming a very, a very more, uh, uh, excuse me, can I? <laughs> and um, so, of course, we, we, we had a, a lot of improvement when it comes to uh, democratization, uh, high standard uh, for uh, election and so on. And um, I'm quite impressed by the evolution of African Union because uh, it's becoming um, a stronger institution. For example, before they didn't want to intervene uh, into the internal political crisis in the different member states of the African Union. Now they decided to intervene when uh, the democracy is threatened, when there is, for example, a non-peaceful transition of power and so on. And they are really working on higher uh, standard uh, re related to the rule of law and uh, human rights and uh, democratic uh, regime and institution and so on. What is the importance of building, maintaining relationships, and the role of experience sharing in managing electoral conflicts? Yeah, of course, we, we have to choose for a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, approach. And uh, I think that one of the most important issues for the European Union is really this close partnership with Africa. We, we are living nearly in the same continent. We have just the sea between our two continents. We, we have so important links due to our history and so on, and the mixity of our population, the diaspora who is living here and so on. Is the peer-to-peer -peer approach the way for effective support? I think that um, 
we have also to to develop the democratic values, of course, uh, worldwide, and uh, we have a lot of challenges uh, when it comes to democracy and so on. Uh, how we uh, uh, involve uh, the trade unions, the different uh, religious groups when it's necessary, uh, women uh, also, uh, uh, NGOs or uh, representants and so on, how um, you give to the population uh, the right to express what he wants every year by referendum or with another methodology than uh, only uh, the work of the parliament. For me it's a very uh, new and key issue because with the development of the, the information, social media and so, you have a very more educated uh, public opinion. What are the next steps, the next challenges? So uh, it's a new uh, internal body, this uh, strategic committee, uh, which was created uh, just two years ago. And I think it's a, a real added value for ECAS because it's composed of a very well-known expert in uh, electoral um, support, but also democratic support. And, um, and uh, this uh, internal uh, body is uh, responsible responsible for in fact giving uh, ideas opinions and advice uh, to the board um, in for example uh, new challenges new opportunities new activities to be developed new strategy to be pursued in terms of uh, for example training uh, publication uh, new countries uh, where to work, for example, or new donors or uh, new challenges, for example, cyber security, new technology. Uh, we spoke about uh, um, disinformation, fake news and so on, women participation. So we, we are uh, really broaden our, the scope of our activities because I think that now um, electoral support has to be uh, longer in term and uh, I think uh, broader in scope also. You team Europe, it means that uh, the European Union uh, has to work more closely with the member states to achieve uh, uh, more uh, joint objectives and so on. So it's our function and I think that it's uh, working quite well. <laughs> What is a strategic and advisory committee, and what are its functions within ICAS? Yeah, it's, I think that it's one of our added value. We are very flexible. We can give quite quick response to a crisis, and we, we work with so many experts, with so different backgrounds, and, uh, and we have this uh, comprehensive approach and multidisciplinary approach, and... Um, so this flexibility is really one of uh, our added value. And I think that this strategic committee, uh, being totally independent, having no interest in nothing, uh, is maybe the, the, the best internal uh, body to give advice. And uh, OK, they are followed, they are not followed, but uh, it's important to have this uh, discussion and also to analyze the new trends of uh, the of democracy, of uh, external uh, policy in Europe, uh, the new challenges, the new opportunities, the new wickedness also. So uh, it's a great job, I think. <laughs>